The Baha'i faith has been spreading rapidly in some of the most isolated areas of the Soviet Union. We have two reports. The remote Russian island of Sakhalin has shown dramatic receptivity to the Baha'i teachings in recent months, expanding from the first declaration of faith by Igor Melanov a little over a year ago to over 500 Baha'is today. This past summer, 210 people declared Ya Baha'i, I am a Baha'i in the city of Uzno Sakhalinsk as a result of teaching activities surrounding two large concerts presented by American jazz singer Donna Kine. <laughs> Beth McKinney, a Baha'i pioneer to Sakhalin Island, recalled the experiences chronicled by Russian playwright Anton Chekhov. It seems to me that when Chekhov made his perilous trip, I mean, <laughs> he did well just to live getting there, when he said, this is the land that God has forgotten. For the faith to come and it to flourish, <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised when I think only 300 and something <laughs> are by <laughs> because it's very ready. But this is everything. You know, there are many, many problems. The problems aren't very important, really, because they drive you to this like you know maybe you've had meetings all day and the evening has come and you're lonely and you have no television and you know what do you do well <laughs> perhaps it shouldn't take all that to get get you to it but you know you open the book and you think uh, oh god my god my beloved my uh, sorry my heart's desire. Sometimes I couldn't finish that much before there's a knock on the door. <laughs> so <laughs> if you want total busyness, this is the island to go to. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the vast expanses of Siberia, traveling teachers have found keen interest in the Baha'i teachings. Less than two years ago, the Baha'i world heard of the first Siberian believers in the city of Ulan Uday located on the shores of Lake Baikal. It is home of the Buryat people, custodians of the oldest Buddhist temple in the Soviet Union. Groups of traveling teachers, including the youth of the Mary and Jack Teaching Project, have worked with the local believers to spread news of the faith to masses of people and have helped start communities in a dozen cities scattered across 5,000 miles of Siberian rail lines. Hundreds have embraced the faith, creating the foundation for the election of eight local spiritual assemblies. A report on the election of the Spiritual Assembly of Yakat was broadcast to two million people. Sixteen television interviews were broadcast over a two-month period. In Taksimo, a meeting with the mayor was televised as part of a two-hour program on the faith. Baha'i documentaries were broadcast to four million people, with translation provided live at the time of the airing. In order to deepen their knowledge of the teachings, the Spiritual Assembly of Ulan Uday hosted a summer school attended by about 100 people from the region. This was the first summer school in the Soviet Union since the community was forcibly disbanded more than 60 years ago. Tony Nelson is a Shoshone Indian, a descendant of the nomadic hunters of the Great Basin in the American West. Following a year as a Baha'i pioneer in the city of Lvov in the Ukraine, he traveled to Siberia sharing elements of his rich cultural heritage with the ethnically diverse peoples of the Central Asian republics along the way. After performing at a cultural festival in Tenda, he met a delegation of the Evenki, a nomadic Mongolian tribe who had traveled from their remote village 300 miles to the north. It was an intimate encounter, the delight of uncovering common traditions, hearkening back to ancient ancestry, 
a spiritual bond re-established through the influence of this universal faith. The Evenki returned to their villages with the Baha'i teachings. Tony Nelson continued to travel eastward. Goodbye.